All righty. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to. Wait, I lost on bottom. Where I went? I now know where you went. Did you go into like the vortex or the the space time continuum or the wormhole or some such thing? <laughs> you know, Jason. Jason's here, and I'm going to start the show in a second officially. But Jason asked if I'm having seltzer water of success, and Jason, yes, I am. Last week, the show was sponsored by. They haven't paid me any money yet, but it was sponsored by Schweppes black cherry seltzer. It tastes like it could be a soda, but it's not because it's just seltzer. No calories, no nothing, no carbs. I'm just saying it. it's yummy. So let's start the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number two of the Hawk Mania show. I'm here tonight with the effervescent, sexy-lipped Amparo Titmus out in California. We're doing Coast to Coast tonight. Hey guys. So that Amparo is here with me. Amparo, I have so much stuff to dish on tonight. I mean, there's so much stuff going on around the industry. So much. Um, if you haven't been to Hawk Mania before, um, there is no rhyme or reason. We sort of have a topic. Sometimes we stick to it. Sometimes we don't. I reserve the right to change it at any moment as I did today. <clears throat> and we talk about stuff. It's just a crazy stream of consciousness. And the first one that I want to start out with is I want to do some shout outs. Are you up for some shout outs on Pato? Yes. All yes. right. So first we have to shout out to our girlfriend, Amber Lee with the ripped jeans. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Amber. I think she's out. Uh, I, I heard some people singing happy birthday before. Hopefully she's out now doing something fun. Um, but we love you, Amber. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Simon Chan of MLM Nation. He just had his hundredth episode of his podcast. I was honored to be invited to be on the podcast a little bit ago. And uh, 100 episode, he's like, uh, you know, if you guys are listening to podcasts or if you're in network marketing, go check it out, uh, MLM Nation. You'll love it. Um, he just has all the top people on, so a lot of smarty pants. And there's one in particular, I haven't listened to all of them, but um, my friend Ron Forrester, if you guys haven't met, he's a very, very top network marketer, and his interview is particularly good. I really like that one. So go look up Ron Forrester, Simon Chan, MLM Nation, Yeehaw. And then I had one more shout out that I didn't write down. It'll come to me in a few minutes. Uh -oh. I'm sure it will. Hey, guys, if you're just coming on, you know, on the left, you know, go ahead and tell a little bird, tell your friends, invite some people. Um, Hogmanie show is completely generic. We're not promoting anything other than us, <laughs> us, us ourselves. And I think some of you might notice my daughter has started. Look what she did. Look, look what she did. Can you see back there? I see shiny balls. Yes. <laughs> I bought her the coolest. When we were in New York last week for Larry's birthday, I bought her. She always makes fun. Every year I buy her this advent calendar. It's 99 cents at Aldi supermarket. For those of you that have Aldi's, you know, it's a cheapy supermarket. And I buy her this 99 cent advent calendar with little pieces of junky chocolate in it. And, um, and she always yells at me because I won't buy her the $5 one. And I'm like, you don't need the $5 one here. It has to, and you open it up each day and you get your little piece of chocolate. So we were in New York and I walked into Starbucks, you know, and while I was busy being offended by their cups, not, um, I saw they had, you know, it was like Advent there. Each one of those is a little ornament, but it has a chocolate truffle inside of it. So every day you open up one of the ornaments, they're all numbered and you eat your chocolate from December 1st to 25th, get ready for Christmas. So I thought that was kind of cool. And she was so excited about it. It was 45 bucks a cool, um, but you got a $5 gift card. It's kind of cool. So uh, she was very excited by it, Amparo. It was good. And yeah, truffles, right? And then we decided that next year we're going to keep the ornaments, but fill them with Godiva's, like the little Godiva truffles. Yeah, that's nice. I won't be having any, but it's fun to watch her eat them. <laughs> so... Anyway, you know what I want to talk about tonight is um, product launches. We just came yeah. off of a crazy, crazy, crazy 10-day period. Uh, we were doing uh, working with um, My Lead System Pro and doing a product launch for Ray Higdon's 3-Minute Expert. And um, it's funny because today I sit here and there were two parts to the launch and two contests. And I happened to win both of them. So... I made a lot of money this week. Okay. I mean, just, just straightforward. I mean, it, I'm par, I'm not a, you know, one to run around and talk about income, but when you have a week like this, it was a $25,000 week, yeah. which that's, is not a week. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> it's 
it's really sweet. It's kind of it's kind of stupid, you know. It's kind of crazy. So part of he's kind of like that's good, you know. It's good. Okay, that that'll redo, you know, part of the house. You know, it's good. And then the other part of me has mixed feelings about launches and different circumstances of launches. So I thought we could maybe mix it up tonight and talk about it because, um, you know, I've participated in a lot of launches over the years. I've um, won lots of launches. I got one of those big publisher clearinghouse checks, you know, which I, I always wanted one of those. You've seen the picture of me with that ridiculous. Big thing. <laughs> you should have seen. We left. We were in San Diego when I won that. Mm-hmm. And then I drove back to Vegas. Yeah, and I was going to stay in Vegas. And have you been in the wind with me? You were, of course. You went in the Rolls Royce at the wind. So you know how beautiful it is there. I pulled up and remember the door that we came out where the Rolls Royce picked us up, that kind of private side door. How could I forget? So, yeah. So I pulled up at that door, but I was driving because I had rented a car. And I pulled up and the bellman comes over to take my stuff and he takes my bags. And then I have this like ridiculous, like this chuck. That's as big as I, I mean, you know, it's, it's five feet long right. and they took it on their little cart to take it to my room. And apparently when the guy came upstairs, he was like, everybody wants to know who this check belongs to all the bellmen, everybody who works there wants to know who the check belongs to. So it was pretty interesting conversation piece to be walking around cool. <laughs> with, uh, with this check. And luckily, our friends, Stephen and Lanacia, Rachel, uh, mailed it out to me. They Stephen took it down to FedEx or somewhere, and he mailed it out to me. So I didn't have to – because I didn't know how I was going to get home. Because I got this oh, – I mean, I should have brought it down. It's stupid. <laughs> so, so over the years, I've competed in a lot of these things. I've won some of them. You know, I've won some prizes and different things. But – I'm always, psychologically, I understand why they work. And I understand they're very lucrative. They've been good to me. But at the same time, I'm not always sure I like launches under certain circumstances. So this was, was this your first time being around one of these big ones? This was my first time. And it was pretty exciting. I learned mm-hmm. that. So I don't know how much you want to go into it, but, you know, I kind of like the idea of kind of breaking it all down, like the anatomy and the physiology. Yeah. And- <laughs> That's kind of what I want to talk about, about why they work, how they work, why they work, when I think that they're awesome, and when that I think that they're not that awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and everybody knows I'm I'm just very straightforward. You know, I'm, I'm been doing this for a long time. And I always look at the long haul, you know, I don't look at how much money I could make today with a promotion, although I I love to make money today. In fact, guess what my new blog is called? No idea. Cash flow and residual. Cashflow and residual.com. It's not up yet. Don't go look for it because it's not there. You won't find it. But um, that's what I decided. I was going through some of my old domain names and I was like, what am I going to call this blog and what's it going to be about? Um, and I saw that and I went, that's it, cash flow and residual. Like and there is a big difference between cash flow income, which we love, that's get paid today, right? And right. residual income, that's get paid over and over and over again. Right. And there's a difference in the psychology of it. There's a difference in the way you treat a customer when they're buying from you residually, not that you don't always treat your customers well, but there's a different relationship. There's a different um, energy with residual customers versus short-term customers. So the history, and, and if anybody has a question or anything, write it in or if you want us to go in any particular direction. But launches, you know, there's always been product launches at network marketing companies at different things. But several years ago, I don't know how many, and, and uh, Justin's in the house, Linda's in the house, DeMarco's around, Nikki Bella, another RN in the house, Judy. Um, Jeff Walker created a co- course called The Launch Formula. Have you ever seen it? No. Okay. It was a, it, he still relaunches it pretty much every year. And what he did was he started a phenomenon. This might've been like 2007, 2008. I'd have to look it up. Maybe somebody knows 
where he started the phenomenon of the big ticket launch. Mm -hmm. And we went, we had products going from about 297, but that big, the magic number at that time was $2,000. And all the big guys, Frank Kern and Eben Pagan and everybody, Mike Keenigs, they did a $2,000 launch. And it was always a product set or, or um, you know, uh, services or so on. And it was always $2,000. And he had created a course that taught the whole psychology of what made um, these things work. So in the beginning, it was Frank Kern um, had actually helped with the Stomper Net launch, which, which is historically the big revolutionary internet marketing training. The very exclusive it was $800 a month. Stomper Net was. Uh, so it was, yeah, it was big bucks. Um, how do I know? <laughs> I was there. Um, so they, the, the big boys were doing these and people were like fascinated that they were doing these million dollar, multi-million dollar launches. And then Jeff Walker created a course and he laid the whole darn thing out. So all of a sudden they sold, I don't know how many copies of this course and every ding dong in the industry now decided to run a launch. And so there was, there was a launch like every other day and everybody was trying to use the same techniques. The only problem was that they told everybody what the techniques were. <laughs> so, so it became very predictable. You following me? It, it became, you know, so it's kind of like, okay, now they're going to tell us that the servers crashed. Okay. Now they're going to tell us that they're going to reopen because the servers crashed. Now they're going to tell us this, this, and that. Now they're going to add an additional bonus. Now they're going to tell us you know, it was predictable because he laid out what day to do what, what day to make payments available. You know, it's three payments and then he'll go, okay, six payments. And it was a complete and total formula. And, and then he would revamp the course every couple of years. And then one time, I'll never forget this. Um, there was a launch and it was like your typical launch sequence. And one of the big gurus did this launch and their launch page, you know how they have like a, a sales video or a video or they do the series of four videos to kind of ramp you up. Yeah. And, then, and then they have Facebook comments below mm -hmm. and they're trying to get social proof. Guys, social proof is just that lots of people are saying they're in or lots of people are saying they're buying or lots of people are saying this is great. That causes other people to think, well, if they say it's great, it must be great. I just love these little graphics. They're, uh, it's they're <laughs> just find it fascinating. It's, I just finally learned how to put a little sticker on my Facebook comments today. It's the first time I ever did it. It was like a dancing Snoopy. I was so proud of myself. <clears throat> it was because I won, I won $5,000. I was like, okay, I'll figure out how to do a Snoopy. So, so the Facebook comments on this page, there was like a backlash because everybody had figured this deal out. And this guy was just at the wrong place at the wrong time at the wrong moment. There's Snoopy now. Hi, Jeff. Um, I know I knew Jeff was my Snoopy buddy. And everybody, every comment, usually every comment is like, I love this. This is incredible. Thanks. You know, wow, I can't wait to get the course. I can't, I, I'm so excited. Everyone was, you scum sucking piece of crap trying to pull this over on us again. You didn't deliver last time and you suck and you're terrible. And it was like, holy. And I did a blog post. I could probably go find it. I was just sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, the, the, the natives have gotten restless mm -hmm. and they were throwing stones and they were angry because they had figured out the sequence and they knew what the sequence was. And when they saw that somebody was trying to use it on them again, it made them mad. Mm -hmm. So launches are interesting because they bring in a lot of sales. They make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. They trigger people to take action. The question is, at what point can a launch harm you versus help you? At what point can you not get away with certain sequences again? If you're doing something that has a repeat customer base, at what point are you, you know, out of luck with the same formula? And it happens with every formula. You know, as Gary Vaynerchuk says, do you know what Gary Vaynerchuk says on Potter? 
Not about platform. He says marketers ruin everything. Yes. yes. Marketers ruin everything. Because what happens, there you go, Justin knew. Marketers will overuse and abuse something when they find something that works and they'll keep going until it doesn't work anymore. Mm -hmm. Messed up. Have you seen it? I mean, have you seen this type of stuff for you? Yeah, it's uh, scientific law, actually. You get immune to it. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like um, the one day sale at Macy's. Well, it's a one day sale. It's only one day. Well, after you've been following Macy's for any period of time, you know, they have a one day sale pretty much every 10 days. Hey. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know what the sales cycle is. Um, I'll go in a store. I have one place I like to shop and the girl will be trying to tell me, oh, everything's 25% off today. It's such a good deal. I'm like, no, it's not. It'll be 40% off within the next 10 days. And she's like, oh, no. How do you know that? I'm like, I know that. And then I'd come in the store on the day that it's 40% off and she'll laugh and she'll go, how do you know? And I'm like, because your marketing pattern is predictable. And when a consumer becomes familiar with the pattern, we're literally training them to only buy under certain circumstances. And we're also creating anger inside of them. That's kind of like latent, mm -hmm. it's latent because they feel like they made a decision and they took an action, but they know that they were massaged into the action, massaged into the action. Yeah, yeah. And that bugs them. So I think it's interesting. I don't know if anybody in, you know, over here in the gallery has commentary or thoughts on it, or maybe somebody wants to come over um, and get into discussing it, but I've been watching it for years. And while I certainly like making $25,000 in a week or more, and I've done it many times, um, I always get concerned about hitting people too hard um, and or letting them really see the sequence. Um, and then the question is, should we teach the sequences? When we teach, when our customers are also our marketing students, you're in a weird little place because if you teach them everything, then they know what you're doing. So it's hard to market to people that are really educated. On the flip side, people that are very educated can become your most loyal consumers. And that's really how I pull this stuff off because I try to be pretty transparent. Hmm, let's see. Nikki says it's why I worry about hitting people too hard when there's a launch. <clears throat> yeah, you know, Nick, there's two sides. It depends on how you hit them. And if you're doing it in integrity or if you're doing it in quick, 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 you got, you know, that, that trigger way. Um, and it depends on how you feel about what you're promoting. Are you promoting it simply because it's a launch and, you know, it's a way to make a quick hit or are you promoting it because you believe in the product and there's a special deal right now, or there's a special offer. And yes, Julia, marketing plans for huge brands are planned 12 to 16 months in advance. Absolutely. 100%. And I'm always telling people I keep a calendar. And when I find out about launches and different things that are going on, I always have it all laid out. So I pretty much know what I'm going to be promoting when. Um, and when people ask me last minute, can you promote something? I usually can't simply because I have it all planned out. Um, and you're always going to have just, you're always going to have unsubscribers. Um, you always are. It's just part of the game. I never much worry about it because people leave, but then they come back. You know, they get they, something bugs them or they don't like your letter. Or they don't like, you know, that you're selling something for too many days in a row. And then they go away. And then if you're still oscillating and still performing and still offering quality and value and all that stuff, they come back. So that's OK. It's like anything. It's like your kids. You know, I have, you know, young adult kids. They get annoyed at me. They don't want to be around me. You know, they're supposed to. They're, they're young women. And then the next thing you know, it's like, Mommy, let's go out today. Let's spend time together. They come back. So, you know, that's it. Bert is having a party over here. All righty now. So, you know, launches are controversial in my book. Um, <laughs> Justin said he had a bunch of unsubscribers today and they all missed out on the goodies he sent. So, uh, na, 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 boo, boo. They missed out. It's all, um, you know, it's all a matter. I mean, you guys as... Amparo, as a as a 
subscriber to many people's lists. Um, and as a, as a consumer, you know, you've certainly invested plenty of money in this industry. What do you think? What have you seen? Well, I'm, I'm trying to pick apart the good, the bad, and the ugly. How come sometimes it feels so good and how come sometimes it feels so bad? And then also as marketers, why do we, why do we feel funny about pushing something if it's really good? Or why do some people not feel funny at all? I mean, what have you seen? What have, what have your thoughts been? Have you seen promotions? And of course, we're never bashing any particular process. I'm just trying to dissect it. That's what we do here. We dissect stuff. Um, you know, and we never know until you do something. I mean, I'm glad I did what I did this week. It worked. Um, it was really good. Now I have a lot of great new people to work with and help and, and guide. Um, you know, so it's good. I think it's cyclic. I compare with the weekend because we had the whole planned out. You know, we your your sound is going in and out. Is your mic handy or? Let me, uh, I don't know. I have to get my earpiece. I don't think it's your, yeah, Jeff said use a headset. Yeah. Jeff, you know, it, it, how you handle it is what puts your reputation on the line. That's really what I'm trying to get at with everybody. Launches are not bad. Launches are not good. They're just vehicles, just like anything that you're doing. It's just a vehicle. How do you use the vehicle best? How do you make the vehicle feel good? When does the vehicle feel bad um, for the merchant as well as for the, you know, potential customer for the, for the person on the list. So let's try it now. Is it better now? Hello, yeah. hello. Cool. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, like when I worked retail, this is many, many, many moons ago, we had the whole year laid out and we already knew we had, there were patterns and we had it all planned out and we just, changed it up a little bit to make people feel that it was something brand new and exciting, but it was the same stuff. But, um, and that only works for a certain period of time, you know, so you, you do have to bring something new into it. Um, you also have to try and attract new customers because the old customers, you know, they learn, like you said, they, they know what you're doing and it no longer works. So you have to do something different, mix it up. And, uh, you know, it's interesting always... in, Amparo, in retail, though, it's funny because you can have regular customers that love a particular event, mm -hmm. like they know that there's a, you know, whatever event at a particular store and they right. wait for the event. Like Nordstrom's has a sale like twice a year. Mm -hmm. People wait for the event. The event feels good. Right. Um, like Black Friday. And on the <laughs> right. So what, what kind of retail did you do back in the day? I did retail too. What'd you oh, do? Oh, I used to sell women's accessories. You did high end or middle end? Like like high end stuff or middle of the road? Middle of the road. Um, but like I knew the brands and I mm -hmm. knew the store brand were the same. We would buy it from the same. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same people. But um, yeah, yeah, I knew everything about retail handbags, everything, <laughs> stockings. <laughs> That's it. You were in that department. It's mm -hmm. um, it's funny. I was looking today um, at yesterday's paper, the Sunday paper. It's full of ads now because it's Christmas time, coming into Christmas time. It's not Christmas time yet, though. Let's be clear. But my house is now has some decorations. So I guess it's starting. Mm -hmm. um, and if I hadn't looked like the Target ad or the Macy's mm -hmm. ad, if I hadn't looked, I probably could have 99% with 99% accuracy told you what was on sale. Mm -hmm. I also probably could have told you what was on the front page of the supermarket ad mm -hmm. without looking, you know, like a blind folder. Um, and it's because it's always the same. And it's really interesting, too, because and now I'm thinking about it because it's all coming back to me because this was a really long time ago. But because I was in charge of displays and stuff like that. And I, I would know instinctively based on what the market was looking for to rearrange my products you know, so that I could move what the people wanted, put it more in, more in their face. You just said something that's really important, what the market is looking for, because that's what retail circulates around. Who? What is that, baby skates? I like Rub-A-Dub Dolly, Bert. Can you find Rub-A-Dub Dolly with the, the, the tugboat shower? If you could find that, that would really make me happy, because Rub-A-Dub Dolly with the tugboat shower is a very important part of life. 
He's planning so ahead for Christmas. Christmas. Yes. Um, <laughs> what the marketplace wants, you know, right now this week, there's gravy on sale. There's stuffing on sale. There's turkeys mm -hmm. on sale, even though a lot of people won't buy their turkeys yet. They might if they're frozen. Um, there's, um, you know, all the fixings because it's a couple weeks before Thanksgiving. And what they're doing is they're stocking up on everything that's not perishable. That's what everybody needs this week. In the stores, you're finding the, um, sounds naughty, but blow up beds, whatever you call them, inflatable mattresses. You're oh, finding towels, you're finding silverware, tablecloths, because everybody's getting ready for the holiday. They're going to have company and they need to set the table. They have like um, buffet serving pieces. Um, you know, that's it. Oh, the marketplace knows what they want. Justin says, does the marketplace know what they want or do they need to be shown? Um, you know what? When it's something new and interesting, um, then yeah, you need to show them. But generally speaking, guess what people are buying in retail stores this week? It's just starting to get cold up here. They're picking up gloves. They're picking up coats. They're realizing any minute this warm weather is going to snap and it's going to be freezing out. I have no gloves. Mm -hmm. um, they're out picking up. Uh, the ladies are picking up. Talk about women's accessories. Tights. Um, you know, I like in the winter, um, you know, to wear my dress. Scarves. Right, scarves. They're picking up, um, you know, leather gloves. They're picking up all these things. So, mm -hmm. you know, in, in marketing the things that we sell, uh, you know, they know what they want. They just don't know that they want your specific solution to the thing. They want more leads. They want more traffic. They want to make more money. Um, you know, they want to have new Wait, he found rub -a -dub dolly Oh, Jeff found it. rub -a -dub dolly in the tugboat shower. I might need to sing the theme song. I might. <laughs> Randy says no snow in Ohio yet. Any minute now, Randy. Any minute now. <laughs> Rub it up, Dolly. Soft little Dolly. And then and then it goes tugboat shower. I had to be there. Tugboat shower. So you don't need two people. If Bert were here, we could do it together because we do add a lot because we are one to 20. <laughs> so the snow is coming, Randy, and you know it. You know it's coming. And here's the good news. If you live in Ohio, as you do, Randy, you are able to call me and tell me what my weather will be like tomorrow. Or you could just Facebook me and let me know. Because I have Ohio sources, but my best Ohio source is out of the loop right now. She'd always tell me what was coming. Because it just comes right across. So um, whatever you got, I'm getting it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and Justin, it's just going to snow all winter where you live. So what do you like? <laughs> I don't even make believe like it's not coming. No, it's coming. snow. I haven't it's seen summer. snow in about six years. <laughs> I'll throw a snowball right across the country at you. Marco, <laughs> you know you're getting silly too. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> All you people. Yes, you need definitely needs Ohio sources. Jeff, because their weather gets you before it gets to me. Although the Hudson Valley sometimes varies a little bit. Because you got like, especially where you live, you got that extra thing. I'm now making the show absolutely not evergreen. The whole point of the show is that it's supposed to be something people could watch forever. Launches are evergreen. But uh, talking Ohio weather. <laughs> <laughs> but you grew up in New York. You know, it's like nice, nice, nice nights. Damn. You know, it's yes. just like one morning you wake up and it's, it's brutal. Usually mm -hmm. it happens by now because it's already November 16th. Mm -hmm. But it has not happened. So it's coming, it's coming. And when it comes, it's going to be, it's going to be ugly. Ah, we're not adding nothing. I don't edit anything. It's, it's, I can't be bothered with editing, editing. If they don't like it, they can fast forward. That's what the fast forward button is for. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's so funny. Hey, we're lucky now we have the internet so we can look up and see what the weather is going to be like. I can remember getting ready to go to school and standing at the bus stop forever and right? not knowing the schools were closed. <laughs> right? You remember that? Oh my yes. gosh. Because you had to watch, you had to, I remember I used to wake up in the morning and listen to 660. <laughs> I miss in the morning with the school closings. I'd be like, yeah. oh. Hi, how do you know I'm old when she listened to I Miss in the Morning for mm -hmm. all you radio disc jockeys out there, Justin Barkley. So, <laughs> so, you know, I guess, um, you know, I don't have much more to say about launches other than I think the the usage of them, you got to be smart about. Um, I think it's very cool that anybody, once you learn the mechanics of a launch, you can create one anytime. 
Anybody can put together a promotion tomorrow. Let's say you want to go out and sign up seven people this week. And what you do is you have to obviously have been daily working and meeting people and so on, built your list up. Mm -hmm. But you could say the next seven people that join get X, Y, Z. If you have enough action, you'll be able to trigger people. You know, that's mm -hmm. why it's always easy to sign up people or sell stuff or whatever. Because if you have a base and you have people that, you know, have been listening to you and like you, and you've been serving them and creating content, et cetera, it's really easy to make a cool offer. Mm -hmm. And I've done it for at least 10 years. You know, you just put together an offer. Or my favorite thing to do is piggyback another offer. Um, your company is putting out an offer. You piggyback something on top of it. You're la launching goat poo. Okay. Um, so what's oh, our marketing plan going to be for goat poo? Um, because I always say that I could sell cow poop easily. If I could do a cow poop MLM or something. But maybe we need to switch over to goat poop because we have a a, a good supply from bird blood. So what about pig dust? I mean, pig, pig poop. Actually, it sounds cooler. Goat poop, pig poop. Can you use it like fertilizer? You have to show the value. Well, there's so many different things. You probably could make a great facial mask out of it. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> glitter, right? No, that's <laughs> unicorn poop, Angel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm enjoying it. Linus, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go all Linus on your asses and do like the whole like speech about the, you know, night before Christmas and all that stuff. And that'd be good. <laughs> Ooh, a squatty potty. <gasps> Heath box. you won't even imagine what I found at the store the other day. Jillian and I, okay, I'm power. Can I, can I, can I tell you stories? from my past. Can I tell you stories? Yeah. I mean, can I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Before I had this life, I was home with the kids and I was a very big crafter and I used to buy every craft thing under the sun for the project that I was going to do. The project that I was going to do until it got to a point where I had a whole basement full of craft stuff and a whole room that was my crafting room. I had so much stuff. It was stupid. Like it was, I had so much stuff. So when I changed my life around quite a bit, we did a big, um, you know, clear out all the stuff and I gave everything away. Everything. I gave it to the schools. I, gave, I had a tag sale and some lady came by and she was so excited. I said, give me $20. And she looked at me like I was crazy. I said, give me $20 and take anything you want. And she was like, this is thousands of dollars worth of stuff. I said, I need to get rid of it. Give me $20 and take what you want. So I got rid of all of it. I used to, I was a glue gun queen. I would like glue gun everything. And I would, yeah. I would make the, I floral arrangements and all kinds of stuff. So I, have not, I have not been in a craft store for a very long time, 15 years. And the reason why is because you can't let me in them. So like AC Moore or Hobby Lobby or something like that. And let's not get into Hobby Lobby controversy. Um, I did do things with pine cones, Justin. In fact, I had many pine. I probably had garbage bags full of pine cones because I'd go collect them in the woods. And then I would spray paint them and I would sparkle dip them and I would wire them on the Oh, you have no idea. And especially this time of year, I'd get psychotic. And I, I used to also do like these iron on, you you do these designs on the shirt and then you use puff paint to make yes. them three dimensional. I, remember right? those. I, used to, I used to do Christmas, <laughs> Christmas aprons for all the women in the family. Oh my oh. God. Every year it was, I made scarves and, and there was just crap all over the place. Cause I would like half do a project and I'd set it aside, but you can't get rid of it because you're still working on it. And someday you're going to finish it. So anyway, I am not allowed in craft stores. By my own, you know, like, like, you know how like that they have like the problem drinker line and the problem gambler line and the narcotics, yeah. you know, problem line where you call up to get crafters help. anonymous. They need crafters anonymous line <laughs> because I'm not allowed to go in them. So th this last week, for the first time in probably 15 years, Jillian and I went into a craft store because she wanted some Christmas stuff. Uh -oh. Let me tell you, the high never goes away. You know, it's like the minute that that first little you just walked into I walked in and I was intoxicated. OK, I was like a foot into the store 
and I wanted to buy, I know, put that glue gun down. Put I the wanted to buy down. the melty, the bad chocolate that you melt and you put it in molds to make cute little lollipops. I wanted to buy sparkles <laughs> and glitter. And I was just beside myself running around the store. Tool, I wanted to make bows and I was just like psychotic. I have um, a question. What? Is Larry going to win the Ugly Sweater Award this year? <laughs> I don't know. He'd have to work hard on that because there's a lot of ugly sweaters out there. Are you going to make him one? <laughs> Am I going to? No, that's one thing I don't do. I don't knit or crochet. I miss that. Make thing. a poofy. Oh, I could. Oh, you're saying I should create something for him. Would yeah. you like to do an ugly sweater with poofy designs? <laughs> Not so much. I like got my own ugly Yeah, I, that's like his 100-year-old shirt he wears at night. <laughs> so I really don't remember why I'm telling you about going in the craft store. There was a reason. We were talking about something, and it was something, and now I'm lost. But you and couldn't it's all resist Justin, to buy. It's Justin Barkley's fault. Where do you guys find these jpeg -y or whatever these? Oh, look, they have. We need a. We I, need a I, video tutorial on how to do these gifts. I don't need a video tutorial. I don't need to know. All I need to know is how to generate a lead and how to make a sale. That's what I always say. I don't need to know how to be cute on the internet. I'm cute in my own right. I don't need to be cute on the internet. Burt Bledsoe's cute on the internet. I'm just saying. So if I want to be cute, I hang out with him. We cute, do funny stuff. No, you're, you're 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 not cute. You're hot. I'm just saying. Well, thank you. <laughs> the other day, who, who was talking about cougars the other day and how we needed some cougars in the game? I don't know. Somebody was talking about it. I tagged you. It was really funny. So I think it was just first wife makes goat, <laughs> she makes goat soap or some kind of soap. So there was a reason that I was telling you this about my past life and something, and I don't know what it is. And I've just completely ruined the whole Hawkmania show. I, I think I might cry myself to sleep tomorrow. And now Justin's going to want to like edit the whole damn show. So, <clears throat> oh, they know what I want. No, they don't. That wasn't what it was. We were talking about retail, but Larry's trying to help me. <clears throat> he always does. He tries to help me. We got derailed. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. There, there you go. Justin's putting pictures in me now. You know, you know, what else was cool this week? Just sidebar, complete sidebar. Again, it's called Hawkmania Orlando. Uh, I told you it would come back to me. The other thing I want to talk about, Orlando was hopping with home business activity this week. They had the mastermind yes. event, our Jonax event. There was, I think like three or 4,000 people there. And then a bunch of them left for the MLM cruise. And then Jeunesse had their big event in Orlando. So I was watching the pictures yes. from that. Uh, the true vision leadership is just on their way back from Costa Rica. So I've watched mm -hmm. all of that going on. So there's so much going on in the industry and now we move into, um, you know, into December. And, um, you know, I think December, and maybe next week we'll talk about this. Um, who just got back from the cruise? What's TN mean? Tennessee? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, oh, I know. I, I finally, I got the craft store story. Heath, it was for you. And I went, oh, Team National. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I was in the craft store for the first time in 15 years. And they had, have you ever seen the commercial on YouTube for poopery? Have you seen this thing? Yes. There's, there's this with the lady and she has the British accent and everything. It's, yeah, yeah. You, you like this stuff, you like spray it on the toilet or something. And then when you poop, it like, in, in, it encapsules the smell. I don't know. But I was like, in the, yeah. I'm in the craft store and I am so excited that they have poopery. I am like dancing. That was the day I was making the smell. <gasps> Larry, they can you go in the, 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 pen holder, the pen holder on the baking rack? Can you get that pepperoni pizza smelly marker? There's a red marker. I haven't done the pepperoni pizza smelly marker yet. <laughs> Who wants to witness me experiencing? There's the poopery. Yeah, there's it. So they have poopery and I was so excited that they had it in the store. And now, Live on Blab for the first time ever, if Larry can find it. And if not, I'll make him take over the broadcast for a minute. Um, I will, yes, I will, for the first time ever, smell the pepperoni pizza smelly marker, which I have saved for when I could be with all of you. So for those of you that are part of SMS, Smelly Marker Society, all the cool kids. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It smells like freaking pepperoni pizza. That's so weird. And Lisa, I'm glad you're here. It smells. 
<laughs> you want to smell it? It smells like pepperoni pizza or some kind of sm- it smells like pepperoni or something. Smell it, Larry. Thoughts? Anchovies. Anchovies? It does not smell oh, like anchovies. Oh. Smells like I know, pizza. Jeff. How did they? Do you want it me to make like a, a pizza. Yeah. I could. They, they're asking me to. Guys, you don't know. Like, they're telling me to make myself a mustache. You saw me, Amparo, at the retreat. Remember, uh-huh. I drew a question mark on my forehead, like just in front of everybody. Nobody, yeah. except backwards. Brand, Brand, Brandon was supposed to check the marker beforehand to make sure that it wasn't going to be permanent or anything. He was supposed to try it on his hand or some such thing to make sure that the marker would wash off. So I get this question mark on my forehead that I drew on. And then I was like, mm-hmm. all worried that I couldn't get the darn thing off. So <clears throat> yes. he's a doctor. He doesn't know about those things. I know. Right. That, you that's doctors usually a nurse does that. <laughs> you doctors and nurses are so well, I don't doctors like mark you to make sure they don't cut off the wrong leg and stuff like that. And, you know, take out the wrong <laughs> liver. There's only one liver, but you know, like, the wrong lung or something, you know, what are the ones you have two of? Kidneys? What, what what do you have? Which one's the one that you can live without? Right, your kidneys. liver your liver can be cut in half and transplanted into someone else. Though you could leave part of your liver, right? You lose part of your liver and it will regenerate. Isn't that the one? It doesn't regenerate, but yeah, you can. You know what I mean? It'll it'll, it'll function. You can live without it. <laughs> By the way, if any of you have medical questions, just just ask them. Par, I'm kidding. <laughs> Don't do that. So, oh, Homer Simpson. I thought he likes donuts. Anyway, it's 9.38. I think I've given you all the juice. The gossip for the week was all the stuff. Uh, Everybody's in Orlando. Nobody's in Vegas this week. Usually everybody's in Vegas and nobody's in Orlando, but everybody's in Orlando. Um, I don't know. We we covered a lot of material tonight, and you guys have pulled up some. See, I wish that when we had the recordings that people could see what's going on in the side panel. But I guess if you watch the recording of the show, you'll just have to come live. It's very cheesy. Very cheesy. It's the cheesiest. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We're going to try to be here on Monday nights, uh, barring travel and all that other good stuff. But Monday nights, 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern, it is Hawk Mania. Send me, you guys have a topic or something you want us to pick apart. Um, Doing auditions for some co-hosts. You know, we're going to rotate around. If any of you guys want to do a show, a really Mm -hmm. big show. Shout out to Gary D. Um, really big show. Um, we're gonna get into the show. So you know, if any of you guys want to play, um, well, we got to talk about stuff. Like we can't just like fool around all night, just half of the night. Well, I think it's good to discuss different things if people have ideas. You know, um, I just like to, you know, my claim to fame on Paro, if I have one, is that I don't get caught up in the, you know the dogma of the industry. I just look at things from an outside perspective. You know, when I look at a launch or I look at it like a company of a pre-launch of new, mm-hmm. new companies that the pre-launch period, do they work? Yes. Do they sometimes not work? Yes. Can they be really a big boon? Yes. Can they be a mess? Yes. You know, I've seen it go well. I've seen it backfire. Um, you know, and I just look at things. I just look at them from the outside and I don't, feel a need to cling to some type of um you know like you know a lot of people they just feel like they need to say everything that the company that they're working with does is perfect i don't think any company is perfect i think every company is doing the best they can trying to be profitable i don't think every rep is perfect i think every rep is doing the best they can trying to be profitable um Mm -hmm. and so i just look at you know, short term and long term, cash flow and residual. Did it did it bring in business? Did it extend business or hurt it in the long run? What's the impact on the customer base? Does the customer base trust you more or less because of an activity? That's a big mm-hmm. question that I always ask myself. Mm-hmm. If I do this thing, I know I'll make money, but will I cause people to trust me or distrust me? That's an well, issue. One thing that I, I like about you, you know, you know, my, my saying so is that first of all, you're authentic and you're not what I have found my experience with you. And I've been working with you for a while now is that because you're authentic, you're not looking at what you're going to get today. You, you are a farmer. 
you know, you're projecting into the future and you're investing yourself with other people. You invest in other people. You know what yeah. I'm doing? You know what I'm doing right after Thanksgiving? Cool. I'm going away to write a book. And my book is about my philosophy and ideas around customer yes. bases, how I've done what I've done, why I think what I do, and how it's based on my old neighborhood in Brooklyn. It's just based on where I grew up. It's based on the stores that I went to when I was a kid, before the big box generation. Mm -hmm. um, guys, if you look right here on Blab, and if you're, if you're watching the recording, we recorded this on Blab.im, which is a new platform. If you, if you look at Blab alone, there's tons of broadcasts going on. Don't be choking on the show. It's just like not good. Not cool. Yeah, it's not cool to choke on the show. It's just really wrong. Um, but if you look at blab.im, at any given point of the day, even in the middle of the night, you can come over and there's lots of small groups ranging from, I think we have, you know, um, a bunch of people watching right now. There's a bunch of small groups ranging from six people to, I think, you know, 100, 200 people getting together and, and, and talking and hashing things out. We are in the age where we went from, um, you know, it's interesting when we were kids, it was all little stores on main street on 13th Avenue. In my case, it was all little stores and they were little shops and you knew the, the merchants, you knew the owners. And in the 80, you know, then we went into the malls, the, the malls came out in the eighties, some seventies, depending on where you live, but by us, it was the eighties. Then we went into the big box and a lot of the malls struggled. Our malls are, a lot of them, the storefronts are empty. You know, there's a lot of empty stores in the malls. They're, they're you know, and we're, we have a lot of big box stores. But the, what the internet is doing is it's bringing back the specialty shop. What the internet is doing is bringing back the merchant customer relationship. What the internet is doing is creating markets. Guys, I'm here to tell you that if you were to develop a marketing list of a thousand people that know you, like you, and trust you. Just a thousand. You will be full time if you learn how to, you know, present an offer, etc. It's only a thousand people because think about it. That's what a neighborhood was. How many customers went into the neighborhood store? How mm -hmm. many people? Everybody in the neighborhood knew where the neighborhood store was, and that neighborhood was only like a two block radius each way because there was another store on the third block. Right. Remember growing up in the Bronx, there was a corner store and then you'd go down three blocks and there was another corner store and so on and so forth. And then when you wanted to do more shopping, you'd go over to the avenue and it was bigger. But one little store would support a so many block radius. And that guy made a living and he brought up his family on the living from that tiny little radius. That's what the Internet is today. It's these tiny little radiuses that can make you be full time, that can make you make a living. And people are trying to be Target and Walmart when what they should be doing is trying to be Paul's Grocery down the block. Mom it's deep, shop. isn't it? Exactly. Because nowadays you can be a mom and pop shop. I had somebody last night, they messaged me and they go, Diane, comma, if this is really Diane and not one of your many assistants. Because he thinks I'm like running a conglomerate here. But you just saw my husband and his raggedy pajama top and me sitting here in front of, you know, my fireplace. It's just me. And yet I made $25,000 plus because that's not including the other revenue last week. That's stupid. And by the way, that's not a, you know, I'm not recommending, I'm not saying that if you are, you're a viewer of the show that that's going to happen for you. That came with years of work and discipline and, and uh, you know, there, we're not selling anything on the show and there's no guarantee of income or anything like that. Let's be 100% clear in case the FTC is watching. Okay. I can document that that's true. I'm not, you know, just sitting here blabbing about it, whatever. I'm just talking about my experience. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a mom whose kids have grown up. So that can't be my angle anymore. I'm a one person business making that kind of money because of this concept. And that's crazy. And you know what? I know of people that are two, three and four person businesses making millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's possible. The question is, how are you looking at it? And are you trying to be Walmart and Target when you really should be the corner store?
They're two different animals. And sometimes the smaller square footage outfit, you know, the smaller square footage store is making more money per square foot per customer than those really big stores. A lot of overhead and running the big things. It's a different mm -hmm. skill set. <laughs> Empty nest bank account full. I like that, Justin. Angela asked too, and then we're going to get out of here. Angela asked, are there certain times of the years that are better for a launch? Sure. Um, when people want to buy. The, the time of year. When do people want to buy in the home business industry? Think about it. I can tell you, but you guys think about it. Maybe we'll revisit that next week. When are they most likely to buy something? Well, it's not, they get revved up seasonally based upon certain things that go on in the world and it causes them to seek to buy more often. So mm -hmm. launches are better done certain times and better not done certain times. So, oh, Sue tells me that the time on my clock is wrong. I never even look at my clock, but yeah. So yeah, Jeff, you're right. After tax returns come, people are more likely to invest, um, you know, they get Christmas time actually in this industry can be slow. It depends. But right after Christmas, very big. New Year's resolution type, very big. Everybody wants to make a change. Springtime, very big. March, April, very big. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fall, September is back to school. People are more likely to invest in, in things during that time period. Um, you know, so it's just the ebb and flow of the seasons, you know, people are less likely to be buying a lot of stuff in March than they are to be in December. Um, and I'm talking about like in, in, you know, retail, it's just seasonal. They're, you know, they're not like flipping the house in the same way. There's no holiday coming. There's no guests coming. There's no, but then as you get a little closer in uh, later in the spring, March is that, you know, that blah window in most parts of the country. But as soon as you get into the beginning of April, Everything picks up because they're buying all their summer stuff. So just think about, start really noticing patterns in retail. Start watching those flyers. Start looking at the stores. Why do they put things out when they do? Why was there Christmas stuff out in September in the back of the store? And then they moved it to the middle of the store. And now it's at the front of the store. Because there's a cycle of buyers, the early buyer, the, you know, the average buyer, and then the late buyer. Okay, there's people out the week before Christmas trying to get Christmas ornaments and trees and junk like that. Um, you know, and then if you're in retail, you also want to make sure you move the stuff out. That's why they mark it down because they don't want it sitting around. They need to get rid of it. So there's lots of different little things. And that's what you guys really want to just start studying, start noticing, watch the players. What are they marketing? When are they marketing it? What are they talking about? How are they prepping? Like when it's slower, you can be prepping. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed during this launch, I offered a particular bonus, but I was also prepping everybody that wasn't eligible for the bonus to buy that thing in December. I can be prepping my audience to buy something at a later date. So there's all kinds of angles. Uh, what are you guys saying? Uh, Yep. Summertime, a lot of people go to sleep. It's a really important time to be building up your base of people. Um, ah, see, Justin said he went to Target this weekend. And I'm, I'm in your head, aren't I, Justin, right? Because you look at everything differently and you see it the way the products place, like Ampara was saying. She knew what she wanted to move to the front of the display. She knew what people were looking for. She knew what would catch their eye as they walked by the display. Um, you know, maybe the crazy striped socks would catch their eye, but then they were still going to buy the black socks. But you it's put something the thing Go ahead. that you said, you said, you know, you got to keep your finger on the pulse of the market. And when you activate that stuff and you're tuned into it, you you notice it more. And another word that you use that I love is discipline. You have to, you have to be aware of all this stuff, but then you have to discipline yourself to, to be consistent with staying on top of it and of course creating content. Yeah. Let me give you guys one last thought and then we're done. Also think about peripherals. What does that mean? If everybody's buying Instagram stuff, what goes with Instagram stuff? What else do they buy if they're interested in Instagram? 
phones, um, you know, downloads, uh, apps, et cetera, et cetera. Think about all the different things that people do surrounding if something's hot, what goes with the hot thing? And, and think about the peripherals because when people make a purchase, they almost always make a second corresponding purchase to validate the first one. What does that mean? When I buy a car, I'm almost always going to buy mats and cleaning stuff and fuzzy dice and accessories. When I buy a dress, I'm going to buy shoes and a bag. And because your, your head feels funny about the first purchase, so you buy something else to feel good about the first one. Think about everything you buy 99% of the time, you buy something to go with it. Oh my gosh, I just got a new blog. I'm going to need some royalty-free graphics. So one of my biggest secrets is I've always sold the peripherals. I just got a new home business. I'm going to need a website. I just got a whole new business. I'm going to need to know how to talk to the people. I just got, so you got to think about the peripherals. Yeah, because if you, sell, that. if you sell the peripherals, you can make a lot of cash flow, cash flow and residual as you're developing the base so that you can put them into something residual. You need both. You need cash flow today. You need residual income for tomorrow. And so you have to think short term, long term. And you can't do anything in the short term that will damage the relationship in the long term. But if you don't make any cash flow today, you're going to die. You won't be here for the long term. So it's all, you know, yin and yang and all that other good stuff. So on that note, what is Justin selling us turkeys here or something like that? I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to go sing rub it up dolly, soft little dolly. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, that's it for episode two, two, Dos. two Dos of Hawkmania. I'm here with the fabulous, the beautiful, the elegantly lipped Amparo Titmus. My name is Diane thank you, thank Hockman, you. and I will see you all next week on the Hawk Mania show. Everybody take care. Have a great night.